I'm Dr. Rick Wilson from Rice University, and this is Polytrix. A housing market bubble fueled the U.S. financial crisis in 2008. Well, speculative bubbles are not supposed to happen. After all, rational traders should anticipate when an asset's overvalued and adjust accordingly. Yet, history is rich with instances of overvalued goods that crash. For example, the dot-com crash in 1999 and the Dutch tulip mania of 1637. The latter saw a 60-fold increase or more in the price of tulip bulbs in the years before the crash, and a lot of people in Europe lost fortunes and it dragged down the Dutch economy for many years. Not so different from the U.S. in 2008. What causes bubbles? Well, traders ought to see that an asset's overvalued and refrain from speculating, but it doesn't happen. A new study by Catherine Eckel and Sasha Fulbrun, forthcoming in the American Economic Review, asks whether speculative bubbles can be caused by the fact that most traders are male. Well, men dominate financial markets. It's well known that men are more risk-seeking than women when it comes to financial risk, but men are also more competitive and more overconfident than women. Can this be enough to generate speculative bubbles? Well, Eckel and Fulbrun test this possibility using an experiment. The experimental setting has been widely used by economists and reliably creates speculative bubbles in the laboratory. Nine subjects participate in 15 trading periods, with each trading period lasting four minutes using an auction. Well, what are they trading? There are 18 shares distributed among the subjects at the outset of the experiment, and subjects are given different amounts of cash with which to participate in the auction. Those who own shares can put them up for sale, and anyone can bid for a share. If a buyer and seller agree on a price, uh, the trade takes place. At the end of the trading period, a dividend is paid for each share the person now holds. The dividend's worth is randomly chosen from four different values to create a little uncertainty. The asset's worth the most at the beginning when it's due to generate 15 periods worth of dividends, and at the end of the 15th period, shares are worth nothing. For the first couple of trading periods, auction prices fall below what's known as the fundamental value of the asset. By the fourth period, prices rise well above the fundamental value, and in many markets continue to climb higher into the last few periods. At that point, of course, the market crashes. Those holding high-priced shares lose a lot of money as dividends return little. Those who sell their, sell their shares at the peak realize huge profits. The trick, however, is to know when to sell. Eckel and Fulbrun create markets consisting of all male or all female subjects in the lab. All trading is done via computer and the traders are anonymous. However, everyone can see that the group is the same sex. When looking at the average price for a share by period, sure enough, the all-male markets look just like the typical bubble experiment. By comparison, the all-female markets do not have a pronounced bubble. Women don't make bubbles. The study goes on to compare mixed groups and finds that as the number of males in the trading group increases, bubbles become more pronounced. Heckel and Fulbrun find support for the idea that men like risk more than women, but this doesn't fully account for the differences in behavior. Men are also overconfident in their ability to reap speculative profits. Well, the study is fascinating for pointing to gender differences in trading markets. It lends support for an observation by the New York Times at the height of the U.S. fiscal crisis that, quote, with more women on the trading floor, risk-taking would be a saner business, end quote. Well, read the study for yourself. It's fascinating.